Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be talking about the movie Sunshine. This isn't any sort of review, uh, it's not really professional, I'm not going to give it a score or anything like that, that's not really what this is about. It's basically going to be an unstructured kind of stream of consciousness thing, talking about the movie and why I like it. And I found that I'm bad at describing why I like things, so please bear with me. So the reason I'm making this is because after I rewatched Sunshine, a couple days ago, I was just overcome by how much I loved the movie that I just felt a crazy desire to share it with other people. I want other people to see this movie. It so perfectly fit what I like in films that it felt like it was practically made for me. And I want others to hopefully get out of it what I did. So let me start with the two weakest things about the movie just to get them out of the way. They're two things where if they really bother you, it's probably not the movie for you. And those two weakest things are the plot and the characters. So the plot for the movie is basically, and I should say it's a sci-fi horror movie, definitely more sci-fi than horror. Um, the plot is basically, it's sometime in the future, the sun is starting to die, and so a spaceship is sent to the sun to restart it using some sort of a bomb thing that's not really particularly well explained. And that's sort of the problem with the plot, because that's basically all there is to it. There's really not much meat to it, and I've heard that the science involved in it is very poor. I wouldn't know, but it wouldn't surprise me. So if, if having a coherent or a deep plot is very important to you, probably not the movie for you. And the other thing is the characters. Now, it's kind of strange. The characters don't have much depth at all, which normally would make for characters that I don't care about. That's typically how that works. But for some reason, even though the characters have very little depth, they're very underdeveloped, I still really cared for them. So I didn't find that to be as much of a problem as I normally would. But, yeah, if you really care about deep characters and a deep plot, you're not going to find it here. But now, without, with that out of the way, here are the things that I really freaking love about this movie. Alright, visually, it's incredible. It's so unbelievably beautiful, I don't think I have the words to do it justice. It's, it's incredible. It has amazing camera work, incredibly beautiful sets, it's, that's, about all I can describe it with, and it does not do it justice. It's very, uh, visually it's very experimental, like it's not very traditional in how the movie looks. It's It uses all sorts of crazy camera angles, and it switches between, you know, normal sort of panning shots to absolutely crazy shots and everything in between. And it is directed by Danny Boyle, after all, which did 28 Days Later and Slumdog Millionaire and 127 Hours and Train Spotting. If you're familiar with his work, then you know that his movies are always, or at least almost always, incredibly beautiful. And that is definitely true here. It is ridiculously beautiful. I can't do it justice with words, you'd have to see it to see what I mean. And it's so damn unique. Alright, another thing that's great about it, the sound design. Once again, I can't do it justice, it sounds amazing. It's so... it's a very, like, dark, brooding, moody film. And that applies to everything in it, the sound and the visuals and etc, etc. It just... there's something about the movie that gripped me so tightly and just kept me... Uh, it was so atmospheric that I just felt totally a part of the world and everything that was happening. You know, I felt it. It has a great soundtrack too, and something that's really interesting about the sound design is how it's... it's really exaggerated. And what I mean by that is that the sounds aren't very, I don't know what you could say, naturalistic. It doesn't use very realistic sounds. It uses exaggerated sounds to kind of, it, it's like everything in the movie, visually and sound-wise, is kind of ramped up above what you would really see in real life. Everything is kind of exaggerated and it makes everything extra intense. One, one example of this when it comes to sounds is... There's this one scene where this person's blinking against something that's really bright, like trying to, you know, shield, trying to take it in without being blinded. 
and it's a super close-up camera angle, and when he's blinking, you can hear the eyelashes moving against each other, like this really loud brushing noise. And if you if you try and blink, like right now, blink, it doesn't really make any noise. Or very, very little. So it's one small example where the sound was completely exaggerated. And what that does, and, you know, that sort of thing is seen constantly throughout the film, in terms of the sound being exaggerated and, like, the camera angle being so close up and in the action, is that with everything that happens, you're always just, like, you're sh it's so intense, you're just shoved right into what's happening. Sound-wise and visually speaking, just like you're in it, and you can feel it. You know, you don't feel like you're separated from what's happening, you're in it. If that makes any sense. And that intensity carries over into why I cared about the characters so much, even though they didn't have a particular amount of depth to them. It's, you you know, they're out in the nothingness of space, completely away from anywhere they could possibly get help from. They're just totally isolated. And that's the perfect backdrop for intensity for me. So when something goes wrong, you know, they don't, they have very little recourse. And so even though the characters didn't have much depth, the intensity of everything just puts you right in there with them in peril. You know, when they're inside of a spacesuit or something, and your camera's inside of the spacesuit too, and you hear their, their breathing, and you can feel the claustrophobia, it's just, it's so fucking intense. And I, it really kept me engaged in caring about the characters, even though, you know, there wasn't much to them. I could just feel it. I was right there with them. So this movie blends so many things that I love into one movie. It's got great, unique visuals, amazing sound design. It's extremely intense, and it blends sci-fi and horror. And I, I like, I like sci-fi, and I like horror. But I really like even more than both of those alone is sci-fi horror. It's such an underused genre, I think. I, I just freaking love sci-fi horror. In fact, off the top of my head, there's only three sci-fi horror movies that I can think of that I liked. There's this one, Sunshine. There's Eden Log, which is a practically unknown, I think, French sci-fi horror movie. And then there's Event Horizon. Those are, the, those are, out of all of history, those are the only three good sci-fi horror movies I can ever remember seeing. So I want more of these, please. Sci-fi and horror is such a great mix. I don't know why more people don't take advantage of it. I mean, what could be a better backdrop for horror than something sci-fi-ish like being stuck in space? I mean, it's perfect. That's terrifying. You're totally alone. It's a perfect backdrop for horror. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, if you like moody, atmospheric things, if you like sci-fi and horror and intensity and unique visuals and sound design... If that's something that appeals to you, then I think you will love Sunshine. And I hope you do. And if you watch the movie and want to tell me what you think of it, or just discuss it or something, feel free to leave a comment or send me a PM. If I can get just one person to enjoy this incredible movie, I will be extremely happy.